after watching this video, you will be set to start your calisthenics journey because I will show you a very simple workout structure that allows you to get bigger and work towards skills at the same time. And the first thing you need to know is that in calisthenics, the exercises are very rarely grouped in body parts. For example, in bodybuilding, you could say today I'm training arms and shoulders. Wouldn't do that in calisthenics because almost every single exercise is a compound exercise. And this means that the movements work a lot of different muscles at the same time. And this is of course also one of the reasons why calisthenics will help you master your own body as a unit, which is really cool, especially when you start learning skills. So in calisthenics, we instead differentiate between pulling exercises and pushing exercises, and then the exception to the rule, exercises that work the legs. Now, let's take a sec to talk about which movements are grouped in these categories. Pulling involves exercises where you pull yourself towards the bar, and for dynamic strength, this includes a ton of pull-up variations as well as rows. And muscle-ups are in this category as well, because this exercise is almost entirely pulling. So even though it includes a straight bar dip at the top, it just makes sense to include it as a pulling exercise from a programming perspective. In calisthenics, we also like to talk about static exercises, and for pull, this involves levers in which you actively hold yourself up to make maintain a horizontal body line, both front and back lever variations and progressions. On to the pushing category where you press yourself away from the floor or the bars. For dynamic exercises this could be handstand push-ups, dips and regular push-ups. For static exercises push involves actively pushing against the ground or the p-bars to uphold yourself like in the planche, but it could also be stability focused moves like the handstand. Next up are the legs. The enemy of a calisthenics athlete, or so it used to be at least. This includes squats, and that's actually the main part of it, even though there are quite a bit of different variations, which I'll get into later. So that's the grouping. If you implement some sort of pull, push and leg training in your workouts, you will train and better your entire body. Feel free to pause here if you want the complete overview. You may be thinking, what about abs? I need a six pack. And then my response is that calisthenics will be perfect. Cause the beautiful thing about every exercise being a compound exercise is that your core and abs will be worked in basically everything. You get a strong core by doing calisthenics and fast. The next thing you need to know is that each of these categories must be trained twice a week for optimal strength and hypertrophy. This is what the studies suggest and this is what I'm doing myself. And this of course gives you some different options. The first is two workouts a week, training the entire body in each one. The next is three workouts a week, one full body, one focusing your upper body and one focusing your lower body. Then we have four times a week with the upper body lower body split. And then five times a week with push pull legs upper lower. And finally six times a week going push pull legs, push pull legs. And you can easily flip the push and pull days around. For me personally, I like doing my pull workout first because it doesn't fatigue my push day as much as it would the other way around. Those are small adjustments you can make as you learn. I recommend you choose the weekly structure with the highest amount of training sessions per week that you can still fully prioritize and engage in. The most important thing is consistency and two longer sessions per week in which you work really hard will lead you to much better results than six low energy workouts. Alright, moving on to the actual exercise selection of your workouts. This is where the video will really help you get started. And let's begin with pull. In a session where you implement some sort of pulling, whether it's in a full body, upper body or specific pull day, you want to move through five exercise domains throughout the workout. And the first step is skill work. You want to select one to two pulling skills that you prioritize. For example, let's say I really want to learn the front lever, but I also want to prioritize the muscle up. The first segment of your training, when your muscles and your nervous system is fresh, you always want to spend on the movements that you want to achieve the most. And then you want to do the most challenging progression that you can do with quality. So let's say my strength level allows me to do a tucked front lever for max 5 seconds and in my muscle up attempts I can pull to my chest but I can't really get over the bar. Then the very beginning of my workout I want to spend doing sets of max tucked front lever holds and then as I feel my front lever strength starting to drop I want to move on to sets of muscle up attempts with a technical focus so maybe I watch my tutorial and try to practice the technical cues pulling with everything I got even though I'm not getting over the bar. Between the sets and attempts in this segment of your training, you want to take long breaks to let your muscles and your nervous system recover for the maximum strength output. Take breaks of 3 minutes and sometimes even longer. And when you get a good number of workouts under your belt, you can start to feel when your body is ready to try again. Next, you move on from the technical and playful approach to some sets and reps strengthening. This is what gets you the volume that will make your muscles and strength grow. The second segment in your training should be diagonal pulling. And it may sound cryptical, but let me explain. Diagonal refers 
transverse to the line of your body. If you pull vertically, the bar will become an obstacle, so instead, we move around it by leaning back. This kind of explosive strength is really important in calisthenics and you don't get it as much by doing regular pull-ups. So, instead, we do some explosive diagonal pull-ups. This is also the reason why some of you can do maybe 15 pull-ups but can't get over the bar in a muscle-up, because you lack this specific strength or technique. Do a few sets with explosive reps and choose a band according to your strength level. The next step is vertical pulling. In this segment, you want to do a few sets of pulls with your spine upright, in pull-ups or a pull-up progression. The next segment is horizontal pulling, which you know by now refers to a horizontal body line. This is lever progressions as well as rows or bodyweight curls. If you have a lever as one of your desired skills, I recommend you do a few static holds followed by a few sets of rows. Otherwise, just do the rows. Lastly, we have endurance, which is the high rep burnout. This may not be relevant in the beginning if your muscles are already completely fatigued by the rows, but this is where you achieve complete muscle failure and then go home and rest. So that's the basic structure for an efficient pulling workout. Altogether, this should take about an hour, depending on your personal preferences and whether the exercises are combined with the structure for pushing exercises, which I'll explain next. If you're in a hurry, you can shorten this amount by a lot by supersetting a diagonal exercise directly into a vertical exercise and then directly into a horizontal exercise. All right, onto the pushing part of your workouts. Many stability-based pushing skills require the body to be primed for balancing, which is why the first segment is balance. Here, you practice stability-based exercises like the frog stand, crow stand, and handstand. And then you move on to skill work. Let's work with the example that I really want to learn the freestanding handstand push-up, but I also kind of want to learn the straddle planche on P-bars. In this example, I would start by doing the most difficult progression of handstand push-ups that I'm able to do, that also incorporates the balance that I just primed my body for. So if I don't have my freestanding handstand yet, I would start by doing kickups and practice that. But if I do have my freestanding handstand, maybe I can do a negative rep as the most difficult progression, which I would do for single attempts with rest in between. The sets and rep strengthening comes later, so for now I can play around with the technique. Next, I move on to the most difficult planche progression I can do. And for this example, this would be the tuck planche for about five seconds. Remember that the requirement for holding a static move is three seconds, so the most difficult progression you can do is the one you can hold for this amount of time. I don't want to fill this video with all the progressions for each exercise, but you can simply search for plans progressions here on YouTube. That's the skill work and the next part is vertical pushing. This includes handstand push-up variations, pike ups and dips. If the handstand push-up is a goal of yours, I would recommend doing a few sets of either wall assisted handstand push-ups or an easier variation like pike push-ups and then a few sets of dips. If you don't have the handstand push-up as a goal, you can stick with high intensity sets of dips. Next we have horizontal pushing, which includes planche strengthening and push-ups. If the planche is a goal of yours, I would recommend doing a few sets of of planche leans and a few sets of either pseudo push-ups or regular push-ups. Be careful with the planche progressions in the beginning because these exercises are pretty rough on the ligaments and the ligaments need more time than muscles to build strength. If you want to prioritize endurance and street lifting over statics, just focus on the push-ups. Lastly, we have endurance, and this again is made for complete burnout. If you have any push-up strength left, then great, start with those and superset into knee push-ups, incline push-ups or tricep dips. Otherwise, start with one of these and do it until your strength is gone and you are ready to let your body recover. That's the basic structure for an efficient pushing workout. Pretty similar to the pulling structure, but with a few key differences. Again, this should take about an hour unless you superset these segments or choose to superset both the pulling and pushing exercises, which I'll get into a bit more later. On to the last grouping, which is leg training. I will say that leg training deducts for a lot of upper body skills, so you have to make up with yourself if you would rather be a complete athlete or be very good at statics and power moves. Of course, my recommendation is that you work the legs, which is a must as an endurance or street lifting athlete. The structure for legs is quite a bit different from the other two, and the first segment is heavy. In leg training, we as athletes often rely on weighted calisthenics to build the primary strength. The squat is one of the three basic calisthenics movements, so the 
natural thing to do is to add weight to this exercise. Thus, the first part of your leg training should be weighted squats. Three or four heavy sets with low reps and maybe one or two lighter sets to practice the technique. The next part is light training. This is complementary bodyweight exercises that generate explosiveness, builds muscle and or assist weak points in the squat, depending on your goals. For example, are pistol squats used in many competitions and step ups is a great accessory for pistol squats. Box jumps are great for explosiveness and heel taps are great for knee pain. Make sure to choose your lighter exercises according to your goals. Those are the two steps for your leg trainings. Because the weighted squats require longer breaks, I would say that this type of workout typically lasts 45 minutes, but it depends highly on your chosen accessory exercises. Here's the structure all together. You want to move through these segments for each grouping twice a week and the order doesn't matter. And this means that you can combine the segments if you want to in supersets and in endurance sets. Here's an example from an upper body day where I'm supersetting vertical pulling with vertical pushing and another one supersetting horizontal pulling with horizontal pushing. You can also combine it in longer endurance sets like the set shown here which incorporates both diagonal pulling, vertical pushing and pulling and horizontal pushing. But these sets are typically best when you have built up some endurance otherwise you'll burn out in two minutes and that's not enough volume. This structure is a good way to begin and then later specialize in endurance that freestyle or street lifting. Of course these are just general principles to help you get started and if you want to optimize your gains as much as possible I would recommend a personal program tailored to your needs. But what I went over in this video is a great starting point to then later specialize in a calisthenics discipline. I made a video about all the different styles of calisthenics which are linked in the description. So there you have it. I hope this was helpful. Consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video.